In a single moment, your life can change. Moments with Marianne is a transformative hour that covers an endless array of topics with the best of the best. Marianne's guests are leaders in their field, ranging from inspirational authors, top industry leaders, business and spiritual entrepreneurs. Each guest is gifted and a true visionary, a recognized leader in their own work. They teach others to develop, refocus, and grow. Marianne will bring the best guest and sometimes a special surprise. Don't miss this. And remember, make every moment count. Welcome to Moments with Marianne. We have an amazing show lined up today. Our first guest, um, she's actually a really dear friend of mine. I've been able to spend some time with her in regards to angelic communication. Highly gifted. Her name is Tanya Carol Richardson. She's a self-improvement, spiritual author, and professional intuitive who is passionate about angels, beauty, and nature. So welcome to the show, Tanya. Hi, Marianne. How's it going? Good. How about you? I'm, I'm well. I'm really excited to be here. Oh, I, I'm so delighted that you are. I mean, it's funny. Once I went ahead and reached out to your team and had you uh, booked on the show, I was seeing your book fly everywhere. <laughs> you know? Oh, I'm so that makes me feel good. <laughs> it must have been a synchronicity, but it still makes me feel good. <laughs> <laughs> well, it happened more than a few times, so it definitely was showing up on the radar. So I do appreciate you taking the time to be with us um, here today. So I know that you're you're a, a spiritual teacher and highly gifted intuitive. Yeah, I do. Um, I have. I don't know if your listeners are familiar, but usually when you talk about intuition or psychic gifts, they talk about the four clairs: clairaudience, mm-hmm. clairvoyance. And um, so I do use all of those. I hear voices, I see visions, and I have um, claircognizance where you just kind of know things. And then the one that's most common that um, most of us have, and, you know, to different degrees, is clairsentience. And that's where you have a gut instinct, so the Mm -hmm. hairs on your arms stand on end, you know, that kind of fun stuff. Mm. Well, and we are definitely, you know, into learning more about that and very engaged in what's going on with that. Now, your book, Angel Insights, um, Inspiring Messages and Ways to Connect with Your Spiritual Guardians, what inspired you to write this book? Well, um, I work so so much with angels. I would say primarily with angels, um, mm-hmm. although, of course, when I give someone a reading, um, relatives who've passed on come in, ascended masters come in, spirit guides come in, but definitely a lot of angels come in. And I, I realize how much people love angels. And whenever I would talk about angels on my social media or with clients, they would just get so excited. And I thought, I've got to do a book about angels because people love it. And there's so much to learn about it. And I think um, a lot of people like the idea of angels and it intrigues them. But um, many people don't know much about it. And I, I really felt that they didn't know how to work with angels uh, to the degree that they could. So I wanted to teach people how to really maximize their relationship with all kinds of angels, but especially their guardian angels. You know, you would be 100% right on that. I mean, I have <laughs> a deep, you know, sense for my angels and team that I work with. And I'm all, yeah, I, I just think it's fascinating. I just love it. Yeah, it really is. <laughs> What is one way we can learn the names of our guardian angels? Yeah, that's a fun exercise, and I think it's fun to do because it helps it helps the angels seem more real to you by giving them a name because they are real. And it also um, it makes you feel more bonded to them and encourages you to call on them. Um, and, and if they give you the name, it can be a really powerful interaction between you and the angels where you kind of get that quote-unquote proof that they're real. And all you have to do is go to some place where you can you can be quiet, either in your car or a room, somewhere you can shut the door and just have a few moments to yourself. And and we all have several guardian angels, but you can just start out with one and just say, you know, quietly, or you can say it out loud. You can just think it. I'd really like to know the name of my guard of one of my guardian angels. And then a name might pop into your head. You might hear it like a voice. It might come as a thought. You might actually see the letters written out. Um, and, you know, sit with this for a minute, and if it doesn't work after a few minutes, don't get discouraged. It could just be the angels are encouraging you to come up with a name. And what I say in the book that's really interesting, um, 
often if there was a name that you that really resonated with you as a child, maybe you always named your dolls. In my, mine was Samantha. I had this teddy bear named Samantha, and I loved. And it turns out once I got older, I realized that's the name of one of my lead guardian angels. So you can also pick a name that really resonated with you as a child. Maybe it was a name of an imaginary friend or one of your favorite dolls, and you can use that as your angel's nickname. Mm. That's, that is a really powerful way of doing that. And I was about ready to say, okay, well, stop the train here. You know, they're going to give us their name because I, I know sometimes some angels just don't care. You know, it's like, oh. Well, the name is really, yeah, the, I mean, the name is, um, the, the name is just a convention for you to get to know the angel. I mean, it's not necessarily that you know, the angel has a birth certificate and that's really their name <laughs> on the birth mm-hmm. certificate. So if you decide, you know, you might have a fun, a, you know, a fun-loving angel and you want to name her Trixie. You know, it's just a fun name mm-hmm. you've always liked and it makes you feel, you know, one thing I always say when you're picking a name, the angels are telling me right now, you can't pick a wrong name. You know, there's, you're not going <laughs> to upset them or alienate them or it's not like, you know, they're going to think, I don't like that name. I'm not going to come around. Um, so really the, the test of it is pick a name that makes you feel warm, makes you feel comforted, makes you feel inspired, makes you feel all those things that angels make you feel. When you say that name, and especially if you get some of those clear sentient feelings where you kind of get a chill or the hairs on your arms stand up or you just get a warm feeling, that's, that's a good sign. It's a great name for your angel. Mm. And that's perfect. You know, as you're saying, we can develop that relationship and really – you know, be able to communicate with them at a higher level. Yeah, that's the goal because um, angels are constantly, constantly, the image they're giving me now and an image they often give me is them knocking on the door. They're constantly all day long trying to knock on the door and and give you um, guidance through so many different ways. And in the book I talk about um, all the different ways. I think there's 11 or 12 of them main ways that angels try and give you guidance. But often, sadly, most of the time that stuff is lost on most people because they're not um, receptive to it, they're not open to it, they don't know that it's happening. So when you open up that channel between you and your angels and it's more of a conscious thing with you and where you're you know, regularly using your free will to ask them for help and guidance and you're really keeping your physical eyes and your third eye open to look for those clues that they will send you all day long, then life can be this crazy, magic um, treasure hunt. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, then then that's, you know, like you're saying, it, it's magic. I, I consider that magical because then life becomes more fun. You know? Exactly. And it's looking for those those responses or those um, those communications in a more clear way. And it's fun to get, <clears throat> it's, as you say, it's fun to get those communications But also what's fun is the angels are helping you live at your full potential. They're helping you take the smoothest path, the the quickest, easiest route through challenging situations. So it's fun because you realize, oh, my gosh, they're really there and they're sending me these messages. But also, hey, this is really helpful advice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and, uh, when we really learn to trust that, that's when that communication is super clear and then we're able to get you know these profound messages that change lives. Right. Trusting it is um, key. And, and a lot of that has to do with your intuition because the intuition is a muscle and the more you, you play with it and use it and build it, the stronger it will get. And one of the best ways to improve your intuition because that's one of the main ways angels will send you guidance is through your intuition is to really act on it. You know, act on it, and then you'll see, okay, it's usually right, and then um, it just becomes stronger, and you start getting those messages more and more because it, it is that muscle that you're building up. And, again, intuition is one of the main ways that your angels will send you messages. Mm, that's perfect. Now, for our listeners that um, feel like, gosh, I'm always alone or no one's got my <laughs> back or I'm not here, mm, is yeah. that the case? No, and and angels actually just said never. Very clearly they said never. Um, But the hard thing is, you know, if you feel that way, that's the important thing is how you're feeling. You know, in spiritual truth, that's absolutely the opposite. In fact, when you're going through a hard time, angels and spirit and all of those forces rally around you more than ever. In fact, for the book, they showed me an image of um, when, when you go into crisis, they showed me, uh, you know, in the firehouse, you always see um, the bell rings and the guys are, or the women or men who are the fire people start sliding down the poles. Mm-hmm. That's what happens whenever 
whenever you go into crisis, your whole spiritual team just goes on red alert, high alert, and they really go into action. But the problem is, is that um, I think what the angels are, are telling me is that m- many times people feel like they're alone because angels can't simply change the situation or can't simply stop it. So sometimes we feel alone just because we're going through this terrible cancer diagnosis or this bankruptcy or whatever it is that's so challenging, and um, we feel alone because we almost feel like, well, if God and the angels were real, wouldn't they stop this? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, yeah. so, so that's a very, um, and that's a tough spiritual question. And I think um, one thing that I'm talking about, um, I'm already working my next angel book, is getting out of black and white thinking with God. And, you know, um, many people think that God is either this uh, all all knowing, all seeing, benevolent force that can just that, that should save you from every pain, or God doesn't exist at all. And if it you know it it has to fit into one of those two camps. And the fact is, with life and with God, there's a lot of gray area. Um, mm-hmm. The main thing is is that the angels and spirit never want you to suffer. And whenever you are going through a really challenging time, it's like a, it's like a, you know, a ship that has to go through the ocean and say that there, there's a, there's, you know, there's a certain path or destiny that you were meant to go on and a series of challenges you're meant to face in this life. And it's, it's like a map that spirit has routed out for you. Well, you know, along the way, there's going to be choppy ways. There's going to be all kinds of things that could happen. And the angels and spirit are always there to try and help you, to guide you the safest, easiest, smoothest way through those storms. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not that angels and spirits can make there be no storms. They're just there to help you, um, to help you weather those storms and get through them as quickly as possible, if that makes sense. Oh, totally. I mean, because it, I mean, my my belief is that we are here to learn lessons and progress and grow and you can't do that without challenges. So. It's true, and, and some things are just, you know, I, I definitely agree with that. Some things are learning lessons, and also some things are just true of this dimension we're living on. People mm-hmm. die in this dimension. People get sick in this dimension. Terrible things happen. That's just part of Earth. It's the dimension we find it to be on. It's where we are, and part of it is just the gig. <laughs> you know, there's always, there's, a, yeah. there's, there's always a good side and a shadow side to things. And there's some shadow sides to earth, and it's, it's you know, it's, it's like a, the angels are showing me it's like a rainy day. You know, the sun mm-hmm. isn't always going to be shining on earth. There's going to be some rainy days. And that's just, that's just part of what this dimension is. It, it kind of goes beyond even learning lessons. It's, it's just the brass tacks of where we are. Yeah, and you can't really appreciate the sunshine unless you have the rain, you know? Right, and I actually like rain. I like cloudy days, so <laughs> <laughs> some people out there love the rain. <laughs> yeah, we get quite a few of those in Colorado, you know, so we right. love them too. <laughs> so what is what do our angels really want to tell us? Um, the, the angels just told me the main thing they want to tell you is communicate with us more, ask for our help more. Um, listen to us more. They really, really want to play a more active role in our lives because angels desperately do want to help us live to our full potential, help us do all the things that we came here to do, help us, you know, live out all our passions and our dreams. And they also want to help make the rough times a little bit easier for us. They don't like to see us suffer, and they angels actually feel emotions very intensely. So when you're upset or you're scared or hurting, they're feeling it too. And they want to help, they, they want to help soften that or ease that for you. So um, really what they're saying to me, they just said right now, is reach out to us. They're there and they're really desperate to be a bigger part of your life. Hmm. That's, that's exactly, I think, what a lot of people want to hear. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you know, we can cultivate that relationship and really um, – Get it to a place where it's more of a this divine communication back and forth. And the angels also just wanted me to remind everyone that um, there are no exceptions. There's no one that that is outside of an angel's care. You cannot do anything to alienate your angels. You cannot do anything to turn spirit away from you. And angels are non-denominational. So it doesn't matter if you have a certain religion you subscribe to, if you don't have a religion you subscribe to, if you there's several religions you like, it doesn't matter at all. Um, and, and again, there's nothing you can do. It, it doesn't matter what terrible mistake you've made in your life. Um, you're never outside of the grace of God, and you're never outside of an angel's love ever. Mm. 
That's perfect. And I think um, that non-denominational piece really is probably giving a lot of people peace because it's like, well, you know, I, I didn't have to grow up Roman Catholic or whatever. <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> right. And it's, and it's wonderful because you can be, um, someone who, who likes a lot of spiritual traditions or just considers themselves spiritual and, and has never subscribed to a religion. Or you can be, you can be Jewish. You can be Buddhist. It doesn't matter. The angels, um, they want to work with everyone because they're non-denominational. It, it absolutely doesn't matter to them. Mm-hmm. Definitely our spiritual helpers there or guardian helpers. Now, uh, you know, so how long have you been communicating with the angels? Um, for, for quite a while, I would say probably very actively for about 10 years. Um, that's when my clear audience came online when I started hearing, hearing the voices that I just initially called my little voice <laughs> because I didn't, you know, quite have a frame of reference for it. But then, of course, I started to study up about this, and I've always seen um, psychics my whole life. I've always been attracted to that kind of thing. And I've always been um, very spiritual since I was a child, even though my parents weren't religious and um, weren't exactly atheists, but never talked about God or anything like that. Mm-hmm. And um, but, but once my um, clear audience started coming online, um, then I began to investigate this more and study it more. And then um, it was about five years ago when my clairvoyance came online, which is where you see images um, in the mind's eye that explain things. And I was so excited when that happened. That was really fun. And it's, it just goes to show you, um, which I do explain in the book, I, I, everyone's on a, there's kind of an intuition um, scale that everyone falls on. And no matter where you are on that scale, that you naturally fall on in that scale, you can always significantly improve your intuition just by reading about it, studying it, practicing it, taking classes, etc. And um, it's interesting because clairvoyance, you know, 10 years ago was something that I thought, oh, that's that's lovely that people see these images. That, that would be fun, but, uh, you know, that doesn't happen to me. And now, really, with my clients, I use my clairvoyance just as much as my clairaudience. So it just goes to show you how much your your intuition can come online and improve and grow when you're really, really using it. Mm. That is, and that's um, that's absolutely perfect because it is um, like any muscle. You know, if we're an Olympic um, athlete, you know, we've got to practice and show up and and keep honing our skills. It's right. Kind of the same thing with this, but just in a kind of a different format. Right, and it's a lot more fun. Unlike an Olympic athlete, you don't have to get up at five o'clock in the morning. Uh, yeah. Eat this crazy true. diet. You know, it really can just be as simple as reading a bunch of books, taking a workshop, and and practicing it just in your daily life. You know, it can be that simple to improve your intuition dramatically. Hmm. Now, do you teach workshops that people can? further develop their connection with the angels? I've I've been doing some bookstore events, which have been really fun. And usually I'll give like a a free hour-long talk about angels, and then that can kind of morph into several hours where people are asking questions. And I really enjoy doing that. So I'm open to doing that. But mainly what I'm doing now is writing the books and then doing the private one-on-one readings where I do the angel readings um, where – it's just me and a client, and um, they usually give me a couple things to meditate on beforehand, and then I tell them what the angel said about those topics, and then we spend the next hour just talking about their questions, and then I'm using all the angels that have come into the room and the client's spirit guides, ascended masters, to answer those questions through my intuition. Hmm. So when you're doing that, um, are you communicating with the angels of the people that are there, or is it mostly your team? It's both. It's everybody. There's there's a lot of people. Um, and it's it doesn't get to, you know, usually what you're doing is um, you're just giving answers, and you're not trying to decide exactly who's talking to you, except for um, in the beginning, usually a couple angels will come forward and say, I'm part of this person's spiritual guidance squad. Please tell them their name and what I'm doing for them, or I want to specifically help them with this issue. An ascended master archangel could come forward, so I give that information. And then, of course, if there's an ascended master like Jesus or Buddha, I'll say, hey, this is Jesus or Buddha talking. And um, also if departed loved ones come in, then they will make themselves known. So 
for for a certain part of the part of the session it's just i'm just getting images hearing things and i'm just saying it but then of course there are times when it's important and appropriate for the person to know who's speaking that they will say hey let them know this is the person giving you this information mm -hmm. oh for sure and then that way they can um, kind of follow up on that so how do we know when we're receiving angelic guidance um if you feel like it's angelic guidance, it probably is. Um, one thing that I say will happen is you, you know, sometimes when, when something important happens, whether it's something that, because angelic guidance can come to you so many different ways, it can even come to you through friends and family. They could say something to you. This is a good example. Say you're having a talk with a girlfriend. Maybe you're upset about um, your partner, your child, your job, whatever, and you're kind of hashing it out over lunch. And then all of a sudden, you know, out of nowhere, she says something that really resonates with you and is this new idea how to handle this that just seems so right. And all of a sudden, it's, it's almost like time slows down for a second, and you just feel this, whoo, like, wow, that was really important what she just said. Mm -hmm. It was probably an angel or some other spiritual force telling her to say that, you know, um, putting that idea in her mind. So um, when something feels very weighty or important, whether it's coming to you through a friends and family, through your own intuition, through an email, through a book that you see at the bookstore, whenever something feels really important, feels very weighty, and time kind of slows down a little bit, that's a good, a good indica indication that, hey, this is a sign from spirit. You're supposed, to, you're supposed to stop, absorb this, and really take this a little seriously. Mm. That's and and so people can start looking for um, for those little um, keys, those little notes. Um, basically. Yeah, because the angels will send you messages, you know, in in any way they can. So it, will, it can come to you through a book, through a movie, through something a friend says, through a sign you see on the street, and it all and really go into how you feel when you when you see that or you hear that or you think that, you know, because again, it can be coming into your own. It, it can be just an an insightful thought that you just have out of nowhere and, and you just think, oh my gosh, it was one of those light bulb thoughts like the old cartoons where a little light bulb comes in your head. Well, that was probably an angel putting that really, um, really interesting, important thought into your mind. So really they're telling me the angels are saying, go into how you're feeling when something happens. If it feels weighty and important, then stop and pay attention to it. Mm -hmm. And the other way that they're, they're reminding me is um, when something you see something over and over or you hear something over and over, that synchronicity that keeps happening. Per, you know, maybe you've been trying to get um, – I'm not advocating this. I'm not a medical doctor. But say you've been trying to get pregnant and all, at some, somehow you're seeing everything about acupuncture. All your girlfriends are talking about it. You're seeing it in books everywhere. And, you know, may, it could be the angels saying, hey, maybe a way to increase your fertility is through acupuncture. It's, it, pay attention to those things that happen over and over. You see the same book over and over. Or, you, you know, someone keeps referencing the same movie over and over. Well, hey, maybe you need to sit down and watch that documentary. There might be some important information in there for you. Or definitely invite the author on your show. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> if you have a show, why not? <laughs> if not, then pick up the book and read it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, so what is a way, because I know that you have angel readings, there are intuitive psychic readings that you do. What is a way that our listeners can go ahead and um, schedule up time with you to do that? Yeah, I, you can go to my website, which is tanyarichardson.com, and I do have a tab that says Angel Readings with Tanya, and it's kind of nice. It explains exactly what to expect in those readings. It gives testimonials, and um, then it has a, a little email, and you can just email me, and we'll, we'll set something up. But it's really, really fun. I always say in the readings, you know, you laugh, you cry, you know, you get so much to think about. Things are healed. Things are uncovered. Um, it's really fascinating, and, and I just have a ton of fun doing it. <laughs> I bet. I bet. What is, and, and I know we're kind of coming to the close of our time here today, but I have to ask, what is your favorite angel to work with? Ooh, it's so funny because um, I, I'm writing my next angel book, and I had to admit that the angel that comes in most often um, for me personally and also for my clients is Archangel Michael. 
and mm-hmm. he's a very well-known archangel. And he, I, I say in, in my next book, he's the hardest working angel in heaven. Like they used to say, James Brown was <laughs> the hardest working man in show business. He really does. He's very well known for a reason. The angels tell me. You know, all the angels are very hard working. You can call on any. Don't ever be afraid to call on an archangel just because they're so important, quote unquote. They love to work with people, but Archangel Michael is especially, he's almost like a workaholic. He's everywhere, and he loves to help people, and he can help with a lot of things. And so I'd say he's the one I work with the most, and he's the one that really shows up the most for clients. Mm, that is perfect. Well, so our listeners can go to your website at, um, it's T-A-N-Y-A blessings.com. That's one way to go ahead and um, go to your website. Yeah, you can go to TanyaBlessings or TanyaRichardson.com. They both go to the same website. Oh, perfect. And then from there, they can go ahead and, you know, you see about purchasing your book, scheduling time with you, and learning more about you and different events that you have. Yeah, definitely. And I also have a free newsletter you can sign up for, so that's fun. Oh, you got to do that. Definitely got to join the newsletter. So, <laughs> well, Tanya, thank you so much for taking the time to be on the show with us here today. Thank you. This was so fun. I really enjoyed it. Oh, me too. And for all of our listeners out there, I'd like to thank you for tuning in today. And we'll be right back after these messages. Internationally recognized and award-winning author Judy Goodman works and teaches outside the box of limited thinking. Working with people from every walk of life, her goal is to empower you to be the best you can be, no matter what the challenge is. Born with the gift of seeing beyond our normal vision, she has an extraordinary gift of working with every challenge. Teaching beyond conventional wisdom, her work is described as life-changing. Visit JudyGoodman.com. That's JudyGoodman.com. Ben Wexler is a gifted leadership development and strategy consultant for professionals who want to transform their organizations and careers. Through a uniquely personalized set of processes, participants discover their unique knowledge, how to leverage that knowledge and experience, and then put it all together with a global strategy. You're more valuable, your organization is more valuable, and the change is viral. Contact Ben at 630-881-1074, 630-881-1074. Discover the book publisher's weekly calls compelling. Piper, once and again, is the breathtaking debut novel by psychic medium Caroline E. Zani. Death has no power over love. Piper, once and again, is a story of hope for the hopeless and faith amidst tragedy. Follow Piper on a journey of loss and redemption as she tries to find the one man who can help her figure out why she must be. Piper, once and again, www.carolinezani.com. Um, Are you a successful entrepreneur or sales professional, but you're ready to take your success to the next level? I'm Bob Berg, and I invite you to join me at our next Go-Giver Sales Academy. You'll learn how to communicate your exceptional value to more people, sell at full price, become objection-proof, and embrace the abundance that's your birthright. Limited to just 12 people, so it's personalized, impactful, and transformational. Visit GoGiverSalesAcademy.com and see what others are saying. Hello, this is J.J. Burden, former NFL pro football player and now author, keynote speaker, elite trainer, and success coach. To play in the NFL, it takes certain qualities, principles, and a work ethic that's unmatched. The secret strategy for success is something that I train top leaders, CEOs, sales teams, and entrepreneurs who are looking to move their game to the next level. If you need some VIP coaching or looking for a motivational and spirited keynote speaker, hire me and cultivate a culture of success by visiting JJBurden.com. This is Tanya Carol Richardson, author of the new book, Angel Insights. I used my psychic gifts to get messages from the angels to write this book, and I'd like to help you get personalized messages from your own angels. 
Learn your subconscious blocks, make sense of the past and present, and receive advice about navigating your future in an angel reading at tanyablessings.com. Book a session with me and your angels at tanyablessings.com. back to Moments with Marianne. We are here with a very special guest. She's a best-selling author. I've really come to know her personally. Was invited to her book signing in Denver, which was probably one of the most fabulous book signings I've ever been to. She wrote this book called You and I, Inc., and it's about her, her whole message is about the connection between sexuality and spirituality. She's a women sexuality coach speaker, CEO, and founder of Sexy University. AJ is a pioneer in the field of sexual energy and healing from sexual trauma, and she's been helping women break through underlying beliefs that block them for true intimacy in all areas in their life, resulting in freedom for themselves in every area of their life. So let's welcome to the show, AJ. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm excited to be here. Oh, it's such a delight to have you here, and you know, what a great time, I, I, really, that's probably one of the best book signing parties I've ever been to. You had the ghost wow. stories going on, You, I mean, it, you, the artists, everything came together so nicely. Well, thank you. We had a lot of fun, and it was so wonderful that you could be there, and yes, it was a great time. <laughs> so, you know, I, I wanted to... Um, to talk with you about your best-selling book. Now, what inspired you to write this? Uh, you know, that's a loaded question. Um, <laughs> it's a loaded book, so yeah. <laughs> it really is a loaded book. So I'm going to start somewhere, and, and we'll see where that takes us. You know, when I was seven years old, I knew that I was going to write a book on relationships. And I didn't know at the time what it would be about, but I knew that was my calling. And I think the reason why it was my calling is, is I grew up in a family, um, you know, divorced parents, and I saw the hatred and the, the animosity and the bitterness and the resentment that can be created between um, a man and woman and specifically in the areas of sexuality and how that can destroy relationships. Yet, when I was younger, I had this awareness that it really had nothing to do with my mom or my dad. And so um, it had something to do with, you know, an energy around them and what it is they were believing, these lies that just, you know, were destroying their marriage and destroying our family and, and therefore destroying our world. And so as I grew up, you know, I really took to spirituality. And I say spirituality, even though I, you know, grew up in a church and there was a lot of religion around it. But for me, I had a very different relationship with God. And it was this relationship where I could sit in a car and I could, you know, I'd get this message, you need to go talk to that person or you, you need to go um, pray for that person's grandmother. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm a very, very shy teenager. I don't talk to anybody and, you know, I'm getting this message that I'm supposed to go talk to this woman and pray for her grandmother. But I had this kind of relationship spiritually where I would get out of the car, I'd go over, I'd talk to the woman, I'd start praying for her grandmother, and tears would start coming down her eyes. And and I would look at her, and I'd just be like, God bless you, and then I'd walk <laughs> away. But there was this feeling in my body of worthiness, like I was being used for a tool of love in this world, and it was an experience like no other. And so a very different childhood where, you know, this this was my, um, I think because I was a people pleaser, this was my way of, of finding this happiness in people pleasing with God and my spirituality. Well, as I grew up, basically what happened is, you know, spirituality, religion, all of these different things, I got in touch with sexuality. And now this is where I had some conflict. 
So I was told, you know, you can't have Yeah, (laughs) exactly. You you get it. How can you be spiritual and still, you know, explore your sexuality? Is that even, like, most people look at it like, you know, okay, being spiritual, you got the little halo of your head, sexuality. Oh, there are the thorns and pitchfork, you know? Thank you. (laughs) Thank you. And so many of us grew up that way. And so how it was, it was a complete conflict because here I am serving God, being this vessel of love. And I have this, what happened with me is I had this energy that came up through my body while I was a virgin. So I couldn't quite correlate at the time that that would have been sexual energy. But as my life progressed and I uh, fell in love with my first husband. It was a very sexual attraction. I mean, it was that's what it was about. And of course, my my religious upbringing was you get married before, or yeah, you get married before you have sex. <laughs> but I uh, two months before the wedding, I had sex before I got married, and it caused a lot of guilt and a lot of judgment and a lot of shame, and I felt like I lost my relationship with God. And so what happened was, is the energy left my body. And um, I didn't get those voices anymore. I wasn't told to go talk to that person. I didn't have that worthiness inside of me that said, you know, I'm living for a greater purpose. It wasn't there. And it was, I call those my dark years. I mean, really dark years where, you know, I was ready to take my own life. And um, I, I came to some pretty dark points. And I got a divorce, and, you know, that was against religion. And, you know, all of these different things, these constructs that I had built up in my life, that this is what love and marriage and religion and sex and all this stuff is about, it just comes crumbling down around me. And now I I have to enter a place where, um, you know, I I love having a partner, and I, I love being sexual. So what did I do? I just cut God out of my life, and I said, Screw it. <laughs> it's going to be, this is not going to work for me. So um, I kind of just went the opposite way, and I think a lot of us do because we don't have answers, right? We, we, yeah. I had this relationship with what I thought was God, and then now you're telling me that I'm going to have all this guilt and the shame and all these different things. And so basically what ended up happening was I would go on this experimental level. Well, that didn't really help me either because I thought it was about body, you know, and you have to keep your body a certain way in order to stay sexually attracted to people. And and I just played different mind games. I mean, it, it was the same as religion. It was just I was doing it without God because of that anger. Well, I finally came to a place, again, where I tried to take my own life. And this is where everything changed because – I went out to California, and um, I had this moment sitting out on the cliffs of California, and I was just like, God, I failed at everything in my life. I failed at marriage. I failed at, you know, saving my body. I I, I failed at all these different things, but yet if you exist, you know, please help me get over this guilt. Help me get over this shame. Help me get over feeling like a failure, and I heard this voice that came through me and it was like, I'm here. I'm, 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 I'm here. I love you. I'm going to take care of you. And so I kept journaling and journaling and journaling and journaling. And and Mm -hmm. eventually I just came to this place of strength where I recognized this voice wasn't going to leave me. Right. And so I came to recognize it as my eternal lover. And that's the description that I tell a lot of people and my students and things like that. And so I, I found that there was this masculine within me that was this eternal lover. Well, as as my life progressed, I then allowed myself to go into this space, and I write about a lot of it in the in the book of dancing, and and dancing in my in my sexuality, expressing my sexuality, in, enjoying and celebrating my body, and and um, in a very sexual nature in that you know i'm touching my body i'm dancing i'm letting go i'm breathing i'm having all these experiences and it was so beautiful because i was able to do that in a group of women and it was safe and so i talk a lot about that that safety of expressing your sexuality and your passion well guess what happened Mm. in the midst of that I thought you to ruin you like, your mojo. <laughs> you like that pregnant pause? Um, <laughs> basically, as I'm in this dance studio and I'm expressing my sexuality, that energy comes back 
And long story short, it, there was a moment years later where I recognized, oh, my gosh, that same energy that I felt as a teenager that gave me that worthiness when I would go talk to that woman about her grandmother is the same energy that when I was expressing my passion and my sexuality and and just feeling sexy and feeling worthy because, you know, I talk about sexuality, but really the definition for me is worthiness. So when I made that connection, that that energy and that life force that um, talked to me and was within me, and, I, you know, I call my intuition or my sixth sense, that it came from expressing my sexuality, it was like, oh, my gosh, I have finally found the answer to life. Like, this is who I am. <laughs> and yeah. it's so beautiful because I believe so many, so many women want to express that passion and and we think that a man is going to bring it out of us or it's the man that's creating. But the truth is, it's within us. That energy is within us. Yeah, and it's, and it's interesting because there is such a um, bridge that needs to be gapped between, you know, between the two because oh. there's this chasm between it. A lot of times it's Dude. like, oh, if I'm spiritual, then forget about being, you know, my whole sexual side is just forget it, you know. Thank you. And, yes. and it doesn't have to be like with sexuality doesn't necessarily always mean like, oh, it's, you know, it's like sex. It's it's really being in touch with who it is that we are, you know. Amen. Mm-hmm. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I like to say sexuality is not about age. It is oh, not yeah, about yeah. appearance. It is not even about sex or anything else related to the human condition. It is about energy. And when you tap into this source of energy, I believe that is the energy that we use to tap into the limitless possibilities of life, and mm. and that's my message. Well, that's a that's a really delicious place to be in, you know. Oh, yeah. And I think for a lot of people, it's really going to help them to be able to go. You know what? I'm still a really spiritual person, and yet have this sexual side as well, and it's yes. okay. Yes. You know? So, because, I mean, I can totally understand. I mean, I think a lot of women go through that. It's like, oh, there's this stigma, you know? Yes, absolutely. Well, and that's just it is, is I learned, I learned, well, what's funny is, you know, I say a book wrote me because I had to break through all my fears as I was writing this book because as I tapped into my intuition, it was like every day I had to go, okay, how is this book going to come together? I didn't have a plan for how this book was going to be written. It came to me. It was all <laughs> through my intuition. That was and so then hard believing that, I mean, because uh, the same party was so well planned. You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, planning a party is a whole lot different from writing a novel. Let me tell you. But it was, it was, it was, it was absolutely incredible. And and after I wrote it, people would ask me what it's about, and I would just start sit and cry because I couldn't actually explain it. So what ha had to happen is I actually ended up having to create a program for women just because I had to learn what were the tools that I used, what what were the things that I did to tap into my sexuality, to create that spark. To, and I believe that spark is something that we can access at any time within the body. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to just be in sex because I believe we're here to have a sexual relationship with life. That that is our connection to our intuition. That that is that sexual relationship. And it doesn't have to be labeled. That's us labeling it and giving meaning to it and all of those kind of things. Mm -hmm. It's that passion, that yes. passion that comes with life. You know, yes. being able to show up every day and be absolutely passionate about, you know, it could be your job, like what you do. Yes. You know? So, oh, my goodness. Yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, this is a book, You and I, Inc. I mean, it is a, it's a page turner. So. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm so glad then, you're enjoying it. Oh, I am. I'm not finished with it yet. I mean, and from what I know of you and, and the time that we've been able to spend together has really been enlightening. And, mm. you know, and, and so I want to talk with you about the programs that you offer for women because I think it's so important that we also kind of, 
you know, kind of dive into that and talk about, you know, because for you, this whole, the book, these programs, it was a journey. You know? Complete, and, and, complete and it a, journey. <laughs> and it sounds like the programs kind of helped you craft your elevator speech about what it is you do, you know. You bet. It, it, it actually is what even allows me to actually talk to you on the phone today, Marianne. I, I couldn't even find clarity to be able to, to explain what that book was about. And really, you know, once, once you read it, I don't want to give anything away, but oh, it yeah. was my sexual awakening. It was that moment where I looked into my own eyes and said, this is who you are, and you have to be able to accept that. So the, the program was created in the same way, and it's Sexy University. I mean, what a name, right? <laughs> I'm not giving anything away with that, right? <laughs> and, yes, and the program is for women who want to get that spark back and, and be able to, you know, really do what I did, which is make that connection between their sexuality and spirituality, regardless what it is. It doesn't matter what religion you've grown up in. It doesn't matter what you believe within your own sexuality. You can, once you connect those two things that are such a huge part of our life, then really, I mean, it's just limitless because that energy comes from feeling that worthiness. And I even share with my students, you know, I don't know if you know this, but scientifically, They've shown that, you know, the nuns, the praying nuns and the Buddhist Catholic or Buddhist, excuse me, Buddhist monks, they would be involved in these religious activities and, and they, they studied the brains and what was going on activity wise and they noticed there was a correlation between what was going on when they were in spiritual practices, the same correlation as what was going on with a person who is experiencing sexual attraction or energy in their body. Is that amazing? That is amazing. Yes. You know, and, and it's interesting how that energy is. You know, it, it's yes. for, for basically for two different purposes, but, you know, passion is passion. Passion is passion. It's only us labeling it as wrong. And just mm -hmm. like, you know, I think I, I heard one of your interviews with Joe Vitale, and you said the same thing about money. And I just, oh, man, it clicked. It was like, yes, we are the ones who are putting the meaning on these things. And yet – Everything in life is to be enjoyed, and sexuality, I, I'm sorry, people, but God created it, and it is a part of our life. It's a huge part of our life. So to be able to connect those two things was the greatest blessing of my life, and the fact that my calling was to write a book, I had no clue what that <laughs> no clue <laughs> what that meant and where my life would take me as where I'm at now but every day is an adventure as I listen to my intuition and tune into that energy within my own body and I'm just I feel free you and, know and what yeah. what a great place to be in what a mm. fabulous place to be in where you're really kind of tapped into your intuition yes. you're hearing what you know you're paying attention to your body and I think a lot of us, you know, may pay attention to one but not the other because we're like, oh, we can't do that. Yes. You know? <laughs> yes. Uh, but our body is a – that's exactly what I teach, the, the connection of the body and the mind. And your body – our bodies are huge tools of communication. When we tune in, they will give us messages, and it comes through pain and pleasure. And so I teach my students, you know, how, how do you recognize these things? And then how do you make pain your ally? Because you can actually, you know, pain is never going to be gone. We're not going to, they're not going to read my book and all of a sudden, oh, everything's good, right? <laughs> or go through the program and life is, life is perfect. No, what I teach is that, you know, there is going to be pain, but pain is just an indicator that we're living outside of our truth. And once we are able to go into the mind and connect and see where we're attaching the story, which is the metaphor of what's going on in the book, then, you know, then we can change that story and now we can attract what it is we desire because we're in a place of worthiness. And that's self-worth, that's, that's love within ourselves. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's super powerful and there's, there's a whole lot to it. But I am so passionate about working with women and, and I with this program I like to coach one on one where they get that transformation. Those students that I've had, I, I, I love the moment I 
feel it in my body when they actually make that switch and they understand these tools and how to apply them to their life. Mm. Well, and so now do you, so you do one-on-one coaching with women because I, I mean, I know you have where um, people can sign up for an online class over yes. at sexyu.online at your university. Yes. You have for that. So is that um, one of the ways that they can connect with you? Are there other ways that you do coaching? Oh, you bet. You know, I we do at the sexyu.online is the free program that we put out there so that people can – hear my story, hear the material, and decide if they connect with it or not. And Mm -hmm. if it's something that they connect with, then they can go further. Um, You know, I have my website in different areas where Facebook, social media, all those kind of things to connect with. But, um, yes, I I love – it's my passion. So, honestly, I don't even see it as coaching because I – I live it. I breathe it. I feel it. it it's a part of me, and I, I just want to be here for people and, and help them make that transition because I know how painful it is not to live in that space. Well, I'm so glad that you're bringing this topic up and, and bringing it to the forefront, especially for women, because a lot of times there can be a, a lot of shame involved yes. in the – you know, the sexual piece in regards to how we feel about ourselves spiritually. And mm-hmm. so having a refuge for women where they can go and learn more information and then kind of get out of that mindset because yes. it really is, I believe, and from what I'm hearing from you and what I've been reading from your book, it really is a misperception. It is. You nailed it. And thank you for having me on the show to share it. I mean, it's, it's, it's huge. It's so huge. <laughs> oh, it definitely is my pleasure. It definitely is my pleasure. And this this book is like, I mean, it's wow on many levels. <laughs> mm. it, it really it's deep. Is very well written. You, you did well, a fabulous you. job with that. Thank you yeah. so much. Thank you. Okay. Well, I know, gosh, you know, I could talk with you forever <laughs> and time always flies when we're on the show yes where it does can our, where can our listeners find you to if they want to make an appointment with you oh well you know i would say contact me through my website that is www.ajbieber and it's not like justin bieber it's b as in boy <laughs> e-a b as in boy e-r so www.ajbieber.com and that will um, give you direct access to email me, and I'm great about getting back to people within about a 24-hour period. So uh, I would say that's the best way to contact me. The other way is through social media, and I haven't been great at that, but I'm going to make myself get better. And uh, I, I just I love people. So, mm-hmm. yes, reach out to me in any way, shape, or form. Oh, that is well. Thank you so much, AJ, for taking the time to be on the show with us today. Oh, thank you, thank you so so much, and it was such a pleasure meeting you. And thank you for taking time out of your schedule to come out that evening. It was it was an absolute... oh my god, that was that was more fun than than it's legal. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you can feel it. Thank you for taking the time to be with us on the show today. AJ has offered a free copy of her book. You just pay for shipping. You can go ahead and sign up to receive that at her website at ajbieber.com. It's A-J-B-A-B-E-R.com. Also, if you go to her website, sexyu, S-E-X-Y, the letter U, dot online, you can listen to her video that also talks more about her sexy university. And this is where the connection between spirituality and sexuality is really dove into for you specifically. So you're able to go ahead, you can reserve your spot to listen to the free broadcast and then also um, see if you want to enroll in her sexy university. I'd like to thank all of you for tuning in today. And remember, make every moment count.
Join us next time for Moments with Marianne, when host Marianne Pestana brings another inspirational, gifted leader to help us grow. Tune in every second Sunday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time for Moments with Marianne, when the Dream Vision 7 Radio Network is at 1510 a.m. Boston. Or catch Moments with Marianne every Thursday and Friday at 5 p.m. and 5 a.m. Eastern Time by going to dreamvision7radio.com. To learn how Marianne started her business from the ground up, visit mariannepestana.com. Don't miss this. And remember, make every moment count.